Hello and welcome all. Today I want to try something just a little bit different. If you happen to have a coding challenge, maybe you got it on a technical interview or you have a question on Hacker Rank or Lead Code or whatever, feel free to post it in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. All right, today we are tackling a Hacker Rank problem called Palindrome Index. This is an easy difficulty problem. As usual, I'll go over the problem, give you some time to do it on your own and then go over my solution. Given a string of lowercase letters in the range of A to Z, determine the index of a character that can be removed to make the string a palindrome. There are may be more than one solution, but any will do. If the word is already a palindrome, or if there is no solution, return negative one. Otherwise, return the index of the character to remove. And here's an example of BCBC. BC. You can either remove the B at index zero or C at index three, either one. I'll give you some time to do it on your own and then come back with my solution. Good luck. Let's start off with a simple example here. I have at first an A, B, C, D, and then reverse to be D, C, B, A. This is a regular palindrome. And under it, I have a similar palindrome. I've just removed one of the Ds in the middle because this is still a palindrome. So one quick and easy way of checking for a palindrome that's fairly common is to have two pointers, one on the left and one on the right. And you will move slowly until you get to the center, checking to see if each character is a match. Once you don't have a match, you know that you don't have a palindrome. So for the coding challenge that we're doing, we know that this is actually not a good solution. We would return negative one in this case because we have a palindrome. The question specifically says we need to have one character we need to delete in order to get a palindrome. If it's already a palindrome, then that's not good. We wanna return negative one in that case. So let's go over an example where we do have an error. So here I have four situations. I know it looks like a lot, but there's actually just kind of the one example that's being done in different variants. Let's look at the upper leftmost for now. What we have here is not a palindrome. We have an extra B that I've highlighted in red. The mirror of that is on the right hand side. The lower variants here have the same thing, except I removed one of the D's in the middle, just like I did last time. Just like before, we have our pointers on the left and right, and we're gonna keep traversing until we get to a mismatch. So here's the problem. The pointers can only see the difference. It knows that B is not equal to C, but it doesn't know and it can't tell which letter needs to be deleted. So what we're gonna do is try both and see, well, what happens if we delete the B or we delete the C? Is there a palindrome left over? All right, so let's focus on just one example just to keep things simple. Let's get the upper left variant and kind of zoom in on that. Now we're gonna check both possibilities. So let's have kind of duplicates here. Now on the left here, we're going to imagine a world where we delete the B and on the right, we're gonna imagine what if we delete the C. What does that look like? Well, what that means is we just move the pointers over and essentially skip the letter we wanna delete. And then all we have to do is just keep doing what we've been doing. We continue to check to see if there's a palindrome. On the left here, let's start with that. We move over, everything checks out, the C's match, the D's match, and we now have crossed our pointers. And now we know, hey, this is actually exactly what we're looking for. We had a letter we were deleting and everything else is a palindrome. On the right, we see that immediately the B and the D don't match. So we know this is not a palindrome. Now that we've explored both possibilities, we can kind of go back to our original situation and say, we know one of them is a palindrome if we delete one of the letters, in this case, B. So we know that's the one we can delete and we can return that position for that one, which is index two in this case. What I thought was interesting in the problem is that it says that there may be more than one solution. So it kind of got me curious as to what that situation would be. Things get kind of interesting when you work around that center character. So here we have a similar situation. Again, it's all a bunch of different variants, but if you focus on the upper left, we have essentially a palindrome that has an extra C there. On the right, it's just the mirror image of that. And on the bottom, it's the same thing, except I've removed one of the Ds in the center. If we go through the process, we'll find that we have a mismatch between these Cs and these Ds. With the upper variants, we would do what we did last time. We check one of them leads to a palindrome and the other does not. If you have the bottom situation where one of the characters in the center is a mismatch, then if you delete one, it kind of doesn't matter if which one you delete. You can delete the C or the D. It will still result in a palindrome either way. All right, let's check out some code. So today I'm working in JavaScript, but of course I'm gonna be leaving a solution in Python as well as I usually do. So the first thing I'll have here is a simple helper function. This is just a check to see if a string is already a palindrome. So first we'll start with a left and right pointer starting at index zero and the right is at the last index of the character string. And we're gonna say, okay, well, as long as the left is to the left of the right, <laughs> then we will check to see if any character is not a match. If it is a match, then we can keep going. Otherwise, if there is a mismatch, we can immediately return false as in it's not a palindrome. Otherwise we increment our left once and the right goes back. So if we do a minus, and if we get through that entire while loop, 
then we've essentially crossed the left and right, and we didn't find anything false. We didn't find a mismatch, so we know that we can return true. This is a palindrome. All right, so that's our helper function. This is our main function, palindrome index. We're given a string, so we do something still similar. We have a left and right pointer still. We still keep going until left and right are you know, not met, and we're gonna check to see if there's a mismatch. But here's where the logic kind of gets changed. We're checking one time if there's a mismatch. This is where we found our error. The thing is, we just don't know which side has the error, so we need to check both. So here I'm using our helper function, is palindrome. So what I'm doing is I'm popping in a slice of our given string based on the left and right index. So the left side, I'm getting a plus one. That means I'm essentially skipping whatever character is on the left side. And then the right side, I have to do a plus one just because of how slicing works. It actually is exclusive. So I need to add plus one to make sure to include the rightmost character. That's all. So this slice is checking by skipping the leftmost character. If it is a palindrome, then we know, well, that left one that we skipped, that's the one, that's the index that we need to knock out. And so we can return that right away. Otherwise, we can check to see if the right character needs to be skipped. And again, popping that into is palindrome. I'm taking a slice. I'm including the left character. And because I'm not adding plus one, I'm kind of automatically skipping the right character. Uh, again, just kind of weird that it's a exclusive versus inclusive on uh, the slicing method. Once we can say that that is a palindrome, given that we skipped the rightmost, then we can return right. Otherwise, we got through this whole thing and we had an error, but there was not a palindrome afterwards. That means there was more than one error and we can return negative one there. Now, if we get through this entire while loop without any of this logic, without finding an error, one error, that means that the whole thing was a palindrome to begin with and we still return negative one. All right, let's run some code. Looks good. All right, let's submit some code. All right, looks good. All right, let's go over some very quick time complexity. There's really not much to go over here. In our main function, we're going one character at a time. And the second we find an error, we are slicing our string and going through the remaining characters. So at most, this is going over big O of N and our helper function is doing basically the same thing. So it's also big over of N within the string that we're giving it. So the total time complexity is just a simple big O of N. And this is very good because I believe one of the tests or a few of the tests actually require a pretty uh, stringent time complexity. So you can't take too long for this. All right, folks, if this is the kind of content you enjoy, please make sure to like, subscribe, do all the good things, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.